I flew over my house oh, a couple of weeks ago. Massive. Massive. Fill the sky, did. Made the earth move. Yeah, piece of kit. It's the Vulcan. This is the inside story about one of Britain's best loved aeroplanes and its final flying days. The Avro Vulcan was the plane that protected the nation. A Cold War icon designed to launch a massive nuclear retaliation at the Soviet Union. Today, only one airworthy Vulcan survives, but now too expensive to maintain, this technological masterpiece is about to be grounded forever. Well, it's 30 years past retirement, so we can't say with 100% confidence that it's going to run swimmingly. We're in unknown territory. Towards me, Guy. Guy Martin has been granted privileged access to help prepare the aircraft for its most ambitious mission ever. A 1,000 mile farewell tour of Britain. Oh oh, wow. Brilliant. Guy will also learn about the impossible decisions the Vulcan's elite pilots faced. One of the things you had to come to terms with is that it may well be that you result in the death of hundreds of thousands of, of uh, people on the ground. He'll experience the rare honour of flying in a Vulcan formation. I reckon. I could have jumped onto the Vulcan. I just, I could have, I could, that's how close it was. And he'll become one of the few civilians to ever take control of a military aircraft. You have control, thank you. <laughs> I think that was a little bit more than a wheelie. Stand by for broadcast. Stand by for broadcast. Air raid warning red. I say again, air raid warning red. Vulcan nuclear bombers were scrambled from places like this. Robin Hood Airport near Doncaster is a former RAF base. Of the 136 Vulcans built, only one is left flying. This is where she lives, in her original 1950s Cold War hangar. Oh, we love a new project. We love a new job. We love a new job. Designation XH558. <laughs> Name the spirit of Great Britain. That's a lot of playing. This is the first time Guy's seen a Vulcan up close. Look at that, it's just massive. It's the size of the sky. 45 ton as it sits here. 93 ton when it's full of fuel, 14 fuel tanks in that, 14 fuel tanks. No, it's quite nearly, not quite, but nearly the speed of sound. It's like 700 odd mile an hour. That's a lot of plane work. The Vulcan was a remarkable leap forward. The concept was dreamt up in 1947 by Roy Chadwick, whose other celebrated bomber, the Lancaster, entered service just five years earlier. Going from a Lancaster bomber to this in the space of five years, is like nothing, it's like noise, it's, it's nothing like. You could say, you might say that it's a quantum leap. I wouldn't use that word. I haven't thought of the word yet that I'd use, but this is just, you know, one of those moments, who's that I've come up with? It's one of those moments. Look at it, hey? Handled like a fighter, but then could drop massive nuclear bombs. There are four busy months of air displays to go before 558's final flight, and Guy starts work by reporting to his new boss. We've heard a lot about Taff. He's Welsh, isn't he? He's Welsh. <laughs> I should have known that. Kevin Taff Stone is 558's oh. chief engineer. How are you doing? All right, Taff. Good to Taff meet Stone. you, I'm Guy. Uh, pleased to meet you. So what's the plan then? 
This is the man responsible for keeping the Vulcan flying way past her sell-by date. So if a wing dropped off this, it's your fault? Yes. In the court of law, I could be culpable for it. Oh, heck. And go to prison. It's on his head that he'd go down for five years. And so before Guy is let anywhere near 558... So we are actually on a live, active airfield. Taff insists on some essential training. Health and safety induction. I am a first aider, so there's any problems, I can deal with all that lot. And obviously, we don't get drinking drunk. No, I'm not very good at that, boy. But that doesn't matter. If it means to get the chance to work on a Vulcan, then I'm all for it.